All right, welcome everyone to another episode of State of the Nation. This is episode 12, and we have a fantastic show today. We're going to talk about wire, and we're going to do a deep dive. We've brought a special guest as well, Mariano Conti, who's going to help us with that deep dive. We're also going to touch some other topics, uh, such as what everyone is doing in the crypto space, everyone who's changing, leaving, moving uh, to new opportunities, and we're going to hit a few of us, try to drop some insights and action items. Just as a reminder, this streams live on Tuesday mornings. We're doing it a little bit early today, um, but we usually stream at about 10 a.m. Eastern time. So you can pick up the stream. You can ask us questions live. We try to get some questions answered as well. We release this on YouTube, and then we release it in audio format on the podcast feed as well. Um, I always start with this uh, question to David, and then we'll get to some quick announcements and get to the rest of the show. But David, what is the state of the nation this week, my friend? The state of the nation is positioning. We are <laughs> positioning. And that's why we brought on Mario Nakanti, who will be here in a quick second. But a, a lot of cool things have happened. A, a bunch of people have left their long-standing careers to go off and do new ventures in the space. There's been a ton of seed investments being thrown around into different projects that are just now get, getting started. There's a lot of things that people are repositioning themselves in order to prepare for what it seems to be a coming bull market, which is everyone's talking about it. And because everyone's talking about it, it therefore exists. And so people are positioning themselves. I feel like they're not only positioning th themselves from a career perspective, uh, but they're also positioning their capital, Absolutely. which uh, it is a certainly something that you have to do in the bull run. You have to be in the, in the right place at the right time. You have to start early. That's the number one rule for crypto investing is start early. Can't wait to talk about it. All right. A, a few quick announcements as well. Uh, David, we had an incredible podcast that released yesterday with Vance Spencer from Framework. That's on track to be our most downloaded episode. It is just going absolutely mm -hmm. crazy. David, like, can, can you give folks who haven't gotten a chance to catch up just a quick taste of that episode? Yeah, it's, it's hard because it was so good. It was so dense. And I think uh, every time we have a state of the nation, Van Spencer ran through and, and Framework Ventures ran through that state like months ago. Like they positioned themselves a long time ago. And one of his lines uh, that I really liked in that in that episode was that he has more conviction in his fingernail fingernail than than most VC firms or hedge funds have in their whole entire body, <laughs> and that is, has been absolutely true and it's absolutely paid off for him. Uh, Vance kind of gave us like the dissected recipe of like the bull run so far and like where he thinks it's going, um, and it's really just an all encompassing story as to how we got here. And to where like this liquidity mining, yield farming, vegetable vegetable fields thing is it, how this came to be, and like where it fits in the grand scheme of things, which is a really important conversation to understand. So you gotta listen to it. Like it, it, according to its download charts, like all of DeFi listened to it. So if you haven't listened to it, like you're behind. Yeah, definitely uh, listen to that episode to catch up. We also launched the merch store. So finally, so you can you can hit that at merch dot bankless hq dot com um pretty simple items right now we're going to be expanding later but you can at least buy one of these shirts that david and i are wearing that has been popularly demanded for quite some time so pick one up we also have hoodies um also last thing we have a great deal that we've been working on with ledger so if you don't have a hardware wallet or maybe you have a ledger but you want to position yourself for the bull run you can go to the Ledger store. So Ledger is a, a hardware wallet and pick one up uh, at 20% off. So just type in Bankless, you get your 20% off. It's a week only deal. Just wanted to mention that because um, if you're in the market for Ledgers, I am from time to time, 20% mm -hmm. off is probably the best deal that you're gonna get. David, before we get into the episode, we should talk about our mainline sponsors. Do you wanna start? Yeah, yeah. So one of the, the cool new products that I've been using that is also one of the companies that has received seed investment lately uh, is Zapper. 
and Zapper is this awesome tool. It, it, so I don't know, Ryan, if you use Blockfolio, but like every time I do anything on Uniswap, I have to go open up my Blockfolio to like make a change, right? And yeah. like, I'm a terrible bookkeeper, which means like my Blockfolio is always <laughs> off. And so I've actually started to use Zapper now because Zapper is like, it's like a, it's like a portfolio aggregator, but it does it with using actual truth of Ethereum. Like Blockfolio doesn't know what Ethereum had the data on Ethereum. Zapper does. And so I go and I put in my multiple wallets into Zapper and it gives me a nice little report as to like where all my capital is, where all my assets are. And like, I, I, I don't know when the last time, we, no one really has cash anymore, but like I put on a pair of pants the other day and I found $20. And like when I put in my wallets into Zapper, I was like, oh, I still have that like liquidity. In you Uniswap. found money I, I found, in your pockets, I found like half in your digital pockets? In my digital pockets, yeah, because Zapper, <laughs> nice. because Zapper told me because it knows where my money is better than I do. Uh, Thanks, so, you, so you can go to zapper.com and you can input your Ethereum wallets and it will tell you a nice report as to like where all your money is. And then also it has a cool little tax tool. Uh, and the, the, the automated tax tools are getting really, really good, which again, as a terrible bookkeeper is really useful for me. So check them out. Zapper's the best. All right. Uh, also want to talk about crypto.com. So super excited to have crypto.com as a sponsor. They are one of the best ways, one of the first steps in, yeah, that you could do to bridge your fiat to crypto. We've talked about this so many times on Bankless where you have sort of your fiat money on one side and you have this crypto world on the other. First thing you need to do is bridge it across. Crypto.com has one of the most cost efficient ways to purchase crypto out there. Um, you can buy it with the credit card and they waive the 3.5% fee for all crypto purchases. They also, and this is really cool, I've been using it for a while. They also have a Visa card. So it's a crypto enabled Visa card. Uh, in the US, it's actually hard to get a good crypto Visa card, S particularly if you want to spend cool DeFi assets like ETH and um, DAI. I don't spend my ETH, but I do spend my DAI. So if you want to spend DAI on a credit card, buy your Starbucks coffee with it. Crypto.com in the US is a great way to do that. And they will give you 10% off things like food and groceries, gift cards, 20% back. It actually works. So I have a Crypto.com card right now in my pocket and I use it from time to time to spend my die in the real world. You can download the crypto.com app and get some of the offers that I mentioned, uh, including the 10% off things like food and groceries until the end of December. Bankless listeners, you'll get $50 in their CRO token, which is like their loyalty token. If you sign up with the code bankless, we'll include a link in the show notes. Awesome sponsors. This is going to be a fantastic episode. David, let's bring in our special guest. Bankless Nation, want to welcome uh, Mariano Conti to the Bankless State of the Nation. He's been on the podcast before. Mariano, how are you doing, sir? Hey, how's it going? Thank you for having me. And thank oh, you it, for doing this uh, at an earlier time to oh, accommodate. absolutely, <laughs> Mariano. <laughs> you know, I'm East Coast, so it's like, this is the perfect time for me. But David did wake up early. So, you know, <laughs> cheers, David. We'll see the sunrise behind him as, yeah. we, as we watch. This I'm just going to get brighter and brighter as, as time goes on. <laughs> well, we all get brighter when uh, Mariano's around. Mariano, right. all right. So let's talk about, um, you know, I almost introduced you as uh, the, uh, the maker guy. I, I wanted to almost introduce you as the head of oracles there for a second, but I refrained. So what is your official title now, sir? Are you ambassador for DeFi? Are you, you know, a, just a simple yield farmer? What, what do you, King what's Midas. your title now? King Midas. King Midas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, until yesterday, I was still uh, employed by the Maker Foundation, but okay. starting today, it's either retired or a simple farmer or <laughs> okay. DD. So yeah, uh, anyone well, else will do. I think I think simple farmer is good because um, you know retired is definitely not something you can do these days when you are farming. It's like uh, all of the time you've got to be checking on what's going on in in the farming space and keeping up with these protocols. Um, David and I really wanted to talk about and share with the the Bankless Nation a bit about the Y Earn protocol, the Yearn protocol. So we had Andre on the podcast um, a couple of weeks ago. Folks can check out that episode and get kind of a a download an intro to what uh, wire is and it's basically sort of like a, 
uh, a robo um, yield optimizing protocol, right? That's the, the, the quick one sentence version of, of what it is. But keeping up with everything that Wiren is doing is almost like a full-time job. Um, David and I have joked about like, we could just fork the bankless, like media podcast, everything we do and just have a wire and bankless version <laughs> and have enough content to do a weekly podcast and to do a daily newsletter, maybe like multiple times a day. Um, so what we thought we would do is maybe just do a quick, I guess, brush up on things that are going on in wire and just in the past, like week or two, maybe since we talked to, to Andre and talk about five things. So talk about Ave and wire and talk about insurance. Uh, talk a little bit about staking and uh, YFI governance, talk about funding the DAO, and then finally talk about something that I know is close to your heart, which is the um, wire and ETH mm -hmm. um, uh, vault that is is coming about soon. So does that sound good, Mariano? Yeah, that sounds perfect. I, I think the first topic is actually uh, the topic of the multi-sig signers. Uh, Mario, can you, can you start with the multi-sig signers? Uh, yes. So, and, and, and let me stress that that is right now the only thing uh, that I am for, for the wire uh, protocol. There is a multi-sig, it is uh, a, a six out of nine, uh, I believe, that controls the treasury uh, of the wire protocol. And I proposed myself when they were looking for uh, new members, just because I'm online pretty much most of the time. And uh, they voted me in because um, yeah, I, uh, I've I been voted. in the community for a while. I voted oh. for you. <laughs> and how did you guys vote? Did you vote with uh, y Wifey tokens? Absolutely. The one and only. Yes. Very good. Mm -hmm. You voted for yourself. <laughs> I, so of course you did. <laughs> I voted for myself and uh, for a few others. Nice. Nice. Uh, this, was, this was encouraged. The, uh, I was told that I should vote for myself. And uh, so, yeah, for the past few days, I've been a member of the multisig, but really probably out of the nine people in the multisig, I am the one who's done the least amount of work. Like literally all I've done is sign a few transactions, uh, look at a little bit of code, uh, but that is the pretty much all my, my engagement so far. So, so why did that interest Everybody you in the first place? Everyone else has been just as a fan. Mm -hmm. Well, um, because Wiren, um, Waifus, the the mm -hmm. wi uh, the Wi-Fi token, Andre, that is probably the most interesting things that have happened to DeFi since DeFi started, um, and it revitalized my love for this space, and I felt like I needed to be close to it one way or another, and being a multi-sig signer and just following a Telegram and having to uh, click confirm on my ledger every once in a while felt like the least amount of work for <laughs> the best benefit of being closest uh, to that. Very so cool. Mariano, why? Like why is Wiren so unique? Why did it kind of reignite your excitement about DeFi all over again? Uh, there, are, there are so many things. First off, um, the protocol itself generates money for users and um, since day one. Uh, that, is, that is one of the main reasons. It's, it's useful since day one, easy to use. Um, the the Wi-Fi token has an immaculate conception story not seen since the days of Bitcoin. Um, you know, a Chad founder, I test in prod, uh, Android figure, which let me say that is not the case anymore. So yeah, he does test in production. Uh, he just deploys and gives us mainnet addresses to review. But there are so many people looking at the code now that um, it, it has become mostly a myth that he tests in prod. It's like That's there's a lot of people looking at, at what he writes. Yeah. Um, and, and, and yeah, just the fact that, that this story took everybody by surprise, of course, the price of, of, of the, of the Wi-Fi token, let's not forget that it's, it's been incredible. It's, it has changed so many people's lives in a month, 
a month and a half. Uh, so yeah, can we, uh, can we talk yeah, about the price among the things? Can we talk about the price real quick? Just because that's kind of fun. David, do you remember when we had Daryl on the podcast? Yeah. Do you, do you remember? Yeah, that Darryl was the the Nation? a month ago. All right, a month yeah, ago. It was roughly th- okay. Three thousand dollars. We were at the 3000 mark then. Mm -hmm. And I remember commenting with Daryl, who's another uh, Mm multi-sig holder, I believe, right? Um, That, wow, isn't this amazing? Like we went from $3 to $3,000, a 1000% gain. Isn't that incredible? Like That was um, already the story of the time. (laughs) That was was already the story. Yeah, okay. So a month ago, and now here we are, Mariano, uh, your comment about price. We hit close to 40K, right? Mm-hmm. Or did we hit 40K? Didn't quite so from, hit it. In a month, in another month, yeah. we went from 3,000 to uh, over, you know, over 30K, right? So like, <laughs> when, when is this thing stopping? What's the market cap right now? So the market cap is 708. Oh, so, or, no, that's, you know, that's the trading volume. Our trading volume. So the market cap is over a billion. So it's a unicorn now. Like, mm-hmm. w- was it the case that this thing was just undervalued or... Are we getting into a full hype cycle now? Does anyone know? I still think that it is uh, seriously undervalued. Wow. This is, uh, this is a token that, that, that gives money to its holders. If you, we're probably going to talk about it, but if you lock up uh, your Wi-Fi token, you start earning money instantly. So one of the big themes that we came out of with Vance Spencer in the most recent podcast was that like community is is almost everything, right? Like you start every single protocol lives on top of its community. And that's why I think the the why earn protocol is so strong. In addition to like what it actually is on a technical level, the, the immaculate conception was the biggest community birthing story ever. And like, and Mariano, you said like you've been in into crypto before Ethereum was a thing, and so you like you and yeah. and MakerDAO, you know, arguably kicked off what we know as DeFi, right? So no one has a better perspective as to like what DeFi and community is all about. And so when you tell me that like Yearn rekindled your love for DeFi, and and I see like this um, this massive uh, just community involvement and co- community. Um, uh, governors of the protocol, stewards of the protocol. That's what gets really, I mean, it gets me really excited. We've never really had a community rally around this protocol ever before, ever. Yeah, um, you're, you're totally right. And th- there are probably many reasons for that. that you, you know, you have the, you have the meme of the 30,000 supply. Mm-hmm. Um, you have blue curvies all around, uh, you know, pumping, doing memes, but also explaining, mm-hmm. like uh, out of the blue, starting to explain uh, how everything works. Uh, friendly community mixed, uh, you know, with a bull market. I, I know that there are probably many things that went right uh, by accident, but many more were products of, uh, you know, hard work by the people involved. Yeah, and that, that's another really fascinating subject is because Andre spun this thing out all by himself. But then if you go to the Yearn Governance Forums, you see so many proposals with so many strategies that there's no way that one single man could could ever do this anymore. So like we are now well beyond Andre. And, and the amount of just shipping of code coming out of this community is absolutely insane. And that's kind of like, again, part of the fundamentals of this whole entire project. So I think that kind of turns us to the why ETH vaults, because uh, as somebody who is uh, straddling the world of Maker and the world of Yearn, I feel like no one is better suited to be able to comment about the why ETH vaults. So, so Mariano, could you just kind of uh, uh, explain to us what the why ETH vaults will do? Do you want me to start with that one, or should we save that one for last? Do you Do you have another one in mind? One. Well, we could talk no, about. No. Some, we could, yeah. Let's just talk about. Um, let Let's start talk about the why ETH first. That That sounds cool. Okay, let's do it. Um, so, it is live today. <laughs> uh, it is live right now. There is no UI. Let me tell you what it is. Um, 
the most popular vault right now for the YM protocol is one where you deposit uh, Y curve YCRV tokens mm -hmm. and they earn you a very high percent uh, in APY. I, I believe it's around a hundred percent a year. Uh, what is this? What is this token? So uh, Curve Finance um, has a um, has a token that represents a liquidity pool of four different stable coins. These are uh, Dai, USDC, USDT, and True USD. And you can deposit any of these four, and you get an LP token, a liquidity provider token called uh, a YCRV or Y curve. And then anybody who transacts uh, in that uh, pool between those stable coins, you earn a fee. So that is the that is the Y curve or, or Y curve token. The most popular Y vault, um, it's what was called the the Y Y CRB or Y USDC. What did you do? You put in that LP token in, you deposit that, and it would try to farm. It would try to find you the best yield, and this is also where yield farming comes from. From it's you were already earning yield just from this LP token, and then this vault will find a way to earn you even more on top. Um, it used to be, it, it was it was farming YFII, which is the first clone of, uh, uh, of the Wi-Fi token. Then for the past couple of weeks, it's been farming CRV token uh, from, from the, the curb DAO token. And it's all very interesting, but it's all using stable coins, right? You, to go in, you need to have uh, one of the four. This new vault, the YETH vault, I call it the, the Triforce of DeFi. What it does is it takes Ether. Ether, I think we all agree in this group, Ether is the perfect lateral <laughs> in decentralized finance. It's the native token of Ethereum. Um, it is the one that everybody has. Or needs to have to transact and uh, yeah uh, it is the highest quality collateral so what happens here is people with ether are going to be able to deposit into a uh, yarn vault and behind the scenes what happens is this the vault grabs your ether it locks it up in the maker dial protocol it generates die it puts that die into a uh, curve into this Y uh, curve token. And then it farms yield using the strategy that fits best or the one that is uh, uh, you know, the highest performing. So you're earning in the end a lot of money on top of your ether without losing exposure to your ether. And this is, I call it the Triforce because it is good for ether because it's gonna drive the price up. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna get it uh, locked up into DeFi a lot more. It's going to be good for Maker protocol because uh, it's going to drive the price, um, uh, the peg down or die. So it's going to get it back to one. It's going to generate millions, if not tens or hundreds of millions of new die. Uh, therefore, the stability fee can be raised and MKR can be burned and the Maker protocol can generate money. And of course, it's going to be good for the Wi Fi token because. It is the money robot that is uh, that is executing this whole strategy. So that's why I say it's ETH, MKR, Wi-Fi, and that is the collateral, the protocol, the money robot. It's uh, probably the, the, the best three-way symbiosis I've ever seen uh, in DeFi. Uh, absolutely. And so DAI has actually had like a pretty hard time getting that peg right and for the last like six yeah. months it's been pennies over a dollar which is a, me a meaningful amount oh you're drinking mate i'm so jealous um <laughs> so and and part of that is just because like there's so, been so much demand for cr uh, crypto dollars inside of DeFi, right and so what what you're saying is that because now ether is now involved in the urine protocol via the y eth vaults which comes from maker there's now like a a super strong vehicle for leveraging your ether collateral 
inside of DeFi using Maker as a bridge into Yearn, right? And so you ex you're expecting that people that are interested in receiving Ether denominated returns um, will submit their Ether to the Yearn, which will then send it to MakerDAO. And then MakerDAO will draw DAI. And so then you owe a debt. Uh, and then that DAI submitted to Yearn. And then the Yearn goes and farms in order to pay back that debt. And so as a mental model, this is like buying, getting a mortgage to purchase a house. And then you're putting a renter in that house and you're using that rent money to pay off the mortgage, right? And so you add some time in here and then you have a whole entire house, right? And so that's kind of like the mental model here. Uh, I'm I'm stoked and I'm really excited to see see what happens here because the the Triforce model I think is is very 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 elegant, and this is also something that we were talking about in the Vance Spencer episode where we can talk about composable communities where this is integrating like the Ether Ether bag holders Ether stakeholders who love Ether is integrating the Maker DAO community and is integrating the Yearn community all in one to generate this really powerful primitive that I think will carry us off into the future. Uh, yes, I agree. And and there's a lot of things that I didn't uh, mention. I'll just say quickly one, which is, um, of course, since it is using maker vaults behind the scenes and um, it is locking up Ether, of course, Ether is a volatile asset. It can go up in price, it could go down. And depending on uh, the amount of high debt that the vault has, it uh, could be susceptible to liquidation, right? It needs to maintain 150% collateralization. In the case of this vault, it always tries to maintain 200% collateralization just to be uh, safe above. And the other thing that it can do, it is natively integrated with maker oracles. So it can read from the Oracle security module. So it can know the future. It can always know what the price of ether is gonna be for the maker protocol the following hour. And it, if it knows that it needs to rebalance, it, people are incentivized to call the rebalance function on uh, the white vault and earn a commission for doing that. It, so it is, uh, that I call it unliquidatable. Of course, that is, uh, that is not the case. It could happen, but people are incentivized not to let it happen. So it, it acts as, um, you know, uh, you talked about keeper, keepers who essentially serve as a li liquidating force. It acts as like a super keeper, right? And pulls all this capital together and is, and is smarter maybe than the typical keeper. It also saves on gas fees, right? So if I'm trying to do that sort of strategy and I'm doing it solo on my own without uh, Wiren, I'm going to be paying a lot in gas. Whereas with Wiren, it's just kind of aggregating all of the, the transactions and the capital in this, in this one kind of you know, gas fee. Also, Let's gas is about... at an all-time high today. So. Oh, God. What is it? Three, is it 300, 300 plus? Yeah. Jeez, mm -hmm. man. Yep. Yeah. So like it, even, even um, Wi-Fi as a, like a gas <laughs> savings mechanism is incredibly powerful, just that alone. Let's talk about some of the effects that you were, um, that you were mentioning. So I want to share Mariano's tweet here because... Um, you know, you made reference to it, Mariana, but this to me was like tweet of the month, uh, my friend. So this is ETH maker YFI, the collateral, the protocol, and the money robot. That's the trifecta that we were talking about. Um, and Anthony put together this fantastic meme, I think, of like what it might look like visually <laughs> when Yearn um, starts to, you know, deploy that vault and implement the strategy where it essentially becomes another ETH eater. Um, I also saw you tweet this, Mariana, recently that I think, um, you know, reflects your point. So this is DeFi Pulse. Um, and again, you got to watch this on YouTube, guys, nine, to get all million, these fantastic million, visuals. Crazy. So, but let's sort by ETH, right? So look at how much ETH is getting locked up. Economic bandwidth, as we're fond of saying, a massive amount. Just in the last month, we've locked another 2% or so of ETH Insane. inside of DeFi protocols. Uh, and this is a really fascinating screen. So when I clicked ETH, I'm now sorting by the ETH eaters, the biggest like ETH eaters on the DeFi Pulse board. And you see Maker, as you were saying, Mariana, mm -hmm. is a massive ETH eater. It is locking up 2.6 million ETH. It's just very hungry for ETH. So is Uniswap. Now what we're going to see is Wiren start to rise up those charts. So Wiren- or, or will it be under Maker? 
I guess it will be under Maker. You tell me, Mariana. So Wiren right now is um, locking up a lot. Where is it? Uh, oh, I can't find it here. Yeah. It's oh, a, okay. Because I'm, I'm sorting. Uh, uh, there it is. Number six, it's it's locking up over close to 800 million, um, but not very much ETH. What will be the case when it starts to deploy its vault? Um, I We need to ask uh, Scott Lewis, but I think that the ETH should be under Maker because that is wow, the, yeah, the right. custodian for the for the collateral is going to be the Maker protocol. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen is Maker is going to start locking up a whole bunch more ETH. Right. And then DAI, there's going to be a whole bunch more DAI minted right now. How much DAI is there yeah, on the, the market? Dai, the DAI is recently. going into the urine protocol. The Ether is going into the Maker protocol. Is that right? Um, yes. I don't. If you go back to, uh, to TVL USD and hover over the wire protocol, yeah. Um, can you see under uh, where it says 777, it should say it had a pop-up that said, um, I like just clicked into the details calculating it. Yeah. I... Well, yeah, I don't, I don't know if, um, if that is attributed to to wire yeah there it is so wire and finance is built on top of curve it's tbl is credited to wire finance and curve but not double counted for our okay. stats okay uh i believe in this case yes die will be uh counted on wire and finance and eth on the maker protocol and Tag right team. now there's like 150 million die uh minted probably 350 of those are backed by Ether. Uh, so the bulk of it. And yes, the Maker Protocol has historically been the number one um, holder of DAI in, in DeFi. We've now seen, thanks to SushiSwap, uh, a big increase uh, in Ether locked in Uniswap. Um, but even then, it's, it's still no match for the amount of ETH locked in Maker. <laughs> And that's exactly why you're bullish on those three assets, right? You're bullish on Maker yes. because total locked value increases its potential to extract uh, Maker burn fees. You're bullish on yep. YFI because it's just eating all of these assets and charging fees for every you know additional um, asset that that's locked up inside of it. And you're bullish ETH because it's being used as mega super collateral economic bandwidth, as we would say. And a whole bunch is about to be locked up inside of DeFi, even more. It's at 6% now. So maybe we get to 7, 8, 9%, 10%. And this is all pre staking, by the mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. We haven't even talked about how much staking is going to lock up. That could be another 5%. Um, yeah, that, that's the bull case, guys, right? I mean, for those three assets, it's not any, it's not complicated. You can see it playing out um, if you're paying attention to DeFi right now. Mm -hmm. um, Mariano, maybe just to, just to quickly go back. So we've been talking about this why ETH vault and how big that is, but maybe just to finish that conversation off and then we'll take a step back. When is the why ETH vault coming? So I saw a contract deployed yesterday, I think, but I haven't seen a user interface or any sort of detailed instructions. Is it close? Um, it is very close. I believe that there's already a version on mainnet that people are testing. It may or may not have uh, around 10 or 15 ether uh, when we started our call. I have not seen how much it has now. That slight um, smile on your I face, would... Mariano, tells me everything I need to know. <laughs> uh, IUI is coming maybe tomorrow. I uh, no, no promises there. Like I said, I am not involved save for, you know, being on a telegram and posting funny memes and commenting, signing transactions every now and again, <laughs> but it is so really very close uh, to being released into the world. Fantastic. That is awesome. Fantastic. We are very excited about that. All right. So maybe now let's just take a quick step back and talk about some other things going on in why earn um, because oh, this, it, uh, yeah, go ahead. Before we start, can I say the last thing about the, the why vault? Mm -hmm. 
it was mainly not written by Android. Hmm. It was um, it was contributed by a third party. I, it, I I don't know if I if I should mention who, but maybe uh, maybe they will come forward later. But it was a strategy that was written by somebody else. And the best thing, and also one such a cool thing about the Wyrm uh, protocol is the person who wrote this strategy. Every time somebody uses or interacts or makes money from the Wyrm uh, from the Wyeth vault, they will get five percent for being the writer of the strategy. Wow! And that is, to me, uh, it is like incredible. So. It, it also incentivizes people to write code for the protocol mm -hmm. and earn. It's, I, I, I've never seen a, a better alignment of incentives, truly. So I put out this uh, graphic yesterday, which I had my, my uh, ultra vile dot ETH uh, Twitter friend uh, uh, produce for me. And it's of this like Cthulhu space, like octopus thing. And it has all of the different protocols like in its grasp and like the brain is wire in itself. And like that's because it this thing is a like extra dimensional virus that is just latching on to like every single protocol because of the incentives that every single protocol has. Like every single protocol has reason to be stitched into the Y earn system, right? And not only are the natural incentives there, but like the individual incentives for some individual to take it, take it upon themselves to make that bridge, uh, to build that bridge are also there because they can also pay themselves, you know, a little bit of money. 5% though, 5% is kind of, kind of a lot. Like, it, it, or is it maybe my, my mental model of like, uh, how like what that what that actually means is 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 wrong oh yeah there it is but like it's your octopus david five, five percent of what mariano like can you kind of go into details as to um how that'll work uh yeah i i need to double check the code and and maybe maybe i'm, I'm, I'm messing up the number but if i'm not mistaken uh it is five percent of the profit Okay. So it can be quite okay. a big amount. So yes. yeah, so 95% uh, of what the urine protocol earns for the Y ETH ether depositors goes to ether depositors and 5% of what is made goes to the writer. And I'm assuming at some point in time like governance like maybe this doesn't go on for like, you know, forever, but like this guy whoever whoever wrote this like gets it for the next like 6 months, 12 months, like whatever. Some some initial like bump uh, of funds and, and Or I mean somebody else writes a strategy with a with a lower fee or something right yeah and kind or, of or or a better strategy and then a better will, strategy yeah something like that so like, but the, the, the genius thing about this is that it's incenting itself to mm -hmm. like this is uh you know the the dow vision mm -hmm. of 2016 mm -hmm. where all of the ethereum community was going to come together and create like this uh venture firm essentially to contribute funds into and go fund itself and go fund Ethereum, go fund cool projects and make profit on it. That's what YFI and YEARN is becoming, right? Only it's like using the substrate of all of the, like all of the different um, lending and borrowing protocols and all of the, the, the money protocols and DeFi protocols that are getting built on top. I, I, one thing about this little graphic is I just love how smiley that little ghost is. He's just so stoked to be like <laughs> part, of, part of the urine octopus. <laughs> That's the Ave ghost. All right, so um, Ave, David, I think uh, you mentioned to me that uh, you're messing around with this, but but part of Wi-Fi's growth this week may have been as a result of Ave. So mm -hmm. Ave um, Ave added it. The mm -hmm. Ave ghost added it to its interface, right? So mm -hmm. I can see if I can see it here. So that just happened, I think, last week. So what happens if you deposit Wi-Fi into Ave? Uh, yes. Well, um, there is not that much that happens. You can borrow against. <laughs> um, there is if, if you deposit uh, Wi-Fi in Ave, I think the APY for depositing is zero. Yeah, it is zero right now, so you're not earning anything for for borrowing it. But uh, sorry for supplying it. Uh, but you can borrow against it. And you I don't am, have to sell example. it. You don't have to sell it. You can borrow you against it. You don't have to sell it. Yes, I am. Uh, I'm not gonna say what I'm borrowing, but I'm borrowing uh, against my my Wi-Fi. 
to farm sushi. <laughs> so, Which goes back example. to the episode yeah. with Vance where we talk about the, the farming premium that all these tokens have because like Yearn, Synthetics, they, the Aave, they all produce a capital asset, but they're all collateral or more potential like capital or valuable assets that you can leverage inside of farms. And so like the value of YFI token is now a function of how much return you can get outside of outside of the YFI token just farming, which is just insane. This is why you guys have to go listen to the episode. And also, yeah, and, and, and on Sushi, I could farm directly with uh, Wi-Fi ETH uh, LP pair, but I that is the only asset that I don't like getting any impermanent loss. It's like, even though with the APYs on Sushi, I'm probably making money, because it's like a 2,000%. Even then, it's like, no, no, no uh automatic market makers get your hands off of my wifey so <laughs> I, don't, I don't farm with it <laughs> this uh, is uh this is the the sushi user interface mariana that you're talking about right so this is a yes. user interface where you could deposit yfi in addition to some other DeFi tokens and eth of course uh, and these aren't just, um, you know, straight tokens. These are actually, you, you first have to deposit them as liquidity into Uniswap, and then you can deposit them here. And Sushi is, is trying to be sort of a, um, like a, people call it a vampire protocol, but it's trying to suck liquidity out of Uniswap and be the next Uniswap. That's the attempt that just fired up over the past uh, four days. So that's what you're talking about yeah. with Sushi, right? Yes. It, guys, it's a ton to keep up with here. Like even going back to uh, to Wire in itself. So we touched on Ave. Um, like we could talk about what <laughs> another thing they added last week was delegated funding DAO vaults, right? So this again is the like they were inspired by Fair Launch Capital, which is providing uh, no strings attached seed funding for getting audits done prior to the release of like a, a token or a protocol like a Yam, for instance. And uh, Wifey said, good idea, governance, like we'll do that too. And so now you can actually get capital uh, from YFI as if it was a DAO, right? To build something really cool. So that was just added. You can also, the entire time you've been yeah. able to add, um, you've been able to vote on these things through governance, right? And this is another, the genius about YFI is they seem to incent everybody to do things like mm -hmm. they incent the behavior that they want. So right. one of the things they want is an engaged governance community to vote Wi-Fi holders to vote on things. So mm -hmm. what do they do? They reward you for voting. So if you deposit, if you stake your Wi-Fi, then you can now vote on things on chain and uh, through voting, you get some sort of a return. I don't know if you guys, have you guys uh, voted on I, things yet? And what's I got the paid like? $12 for voting for Mariano to become a multi-sig sign. <laughs> so it wasn't just out of the goodness of your heart, you're yeah. getting paid. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, yeah, I, I, I owe Mariano some lunch. <laughs> well, okay, so how does that work? Um, I've not done it yet. So are you get like, while you're staking, mm -hmm. do you get some sort of yeah, for, uh, so, APR? So you stake it in the governance contract uh, okay. and then and then you go and make a vote, which is just signing a message. And the thing is like it, gas prices are kind of expensive. So like voting for Mariano cost me like $4. Um, and so like, it's good that the wire and protocol is paying its voters because without it, there might be like selfish selfishness and people are like well i'll let other people vote because i don't want to pay for the gas fees well right. the people that do vote get compensated and the people that vote more get get profited right so like so long as you are continuously voting you will continuously receiving uh compensation for both your attention and your energy and your gas uh, that is awesome. yeah exactly so you, the, uh, you stake uh the wi-fi token and then uh, you're earning on top of so the protocol earns a lot of money that people who use the protocol earn a lot of money and some of that goes to the protocol. And I think this is by, it's either by consensus or it's actually in the smart contracts, anything above $500,000 that's in the treasury goes to people staking in governance. So, and, and, and that treasury got filled in three days probably. The, the 500,000 got filled in three days and any extra spills over to the uh, people who are staking, but you can only, you can, you can get the rewards, but you can only withdraw them if you vote. So if you don't vote, you still see the number go up, but you can only 
uh, grab them. If you vote, and then you have to uh, lock up your Wi-Fi for three days. Again, so, back to incentives. Genius. And so, is this the only? So, the the, the prospect or the bull, the bull case for for Wiren is that it it has that treasury that you mentioned, and then it pays out that treasury to the the wifey holders it sounds like what you just said is that it does do that but only if you vote so if you just buy and hold wifey are you are you leaving money on the table like are you is there no prospect of you receiving any of those dividends uh i believe that at this point yes you're not receiving any of those dividends but i may this is this is probably stretching uh, my knowledge of, of the protocol. And I may already have said a couple of things that are incorrect. So <laughs> I don't I, think yeah, anyone I, I actually, maybe except for Andre himself, I don't think anyone can really tell you the complete all encompassing state of the wire protocol, which is also something to be crazy. Yeah, to think there about. is so much. One other thing. So, um, that we could talk about, I don't know if, if you know, how familiar you are, but I, I saw the, the Y insurance piece of things come through. So this is Wi-Fi again, um, deploying something that looks to be kind of revolutionary. So this, this appears to be some sort of uh, smart contract DeFi protocol insurance um, that maybe stacks on top of Nexus Mutual in some way. I'm actually, uh, yes. I, haven't, I haven't done much um, due diligence here. I just haven't had time. Mariano, what do you know about it? I know very little uh, as well. I know that it launched recently. I know that it didn't get the, uh, you know, the, the the reception that it should have. I haven't seen a lot written about it, but I know that it's still revolutionary. It's a couple of clicks, and you you have insurance, either I think in Ether or in Dai, um, over. I would say your deposits in different protocols. You have uh, like most of the big ones, Aave, Balancer, Compound, uh, Curve, Synthetics, and even uh, Wire and some protocol. And the the back end is uh, Nexus Mutual. That's fantastic. So it looks like through the the Wire Insurance interface, the Wire and interface, I could get some cover available, and there's. Uh, almost a hundred and oh, ten thousand k, uh, ten thousand worth of ETH in cover available, mm -hmm. and I could say I want to cover get insurance. That means for um, the amount that I've staked inside of Balancer as a liquidity provider for between th thirty and three hundred sixty-five days, it looks like I can just generate a quote and get that covered here. Um, <laughs> just crazy. The the the, the pace that Wiren is developing, I think. Um, it's very clear that it is only it is not w just one person anymore. It's an entire. It's the entire. It's an Ethereum DAO, basically. Um, it it's is the entire it is the version of the DAO that we originally thought of when we thought of yes. the DAO in 2016. And yes. Except now there's just more. There's just more of everything. More other protocols. More tools. More developers. More community members. More capital. There's just more of everything. It's fantastic. Um, all right, so. Mariano, I know we're we're up on time and you've got to run. We've got a couple other things to cover on State of the Nation for you guys. Um, if, if you are looking to get started with Wiren, we will include a tactic that we wrote up on Bankless. Um, I believe we published that last week to, to get started with some of these vaults. You can see, to get started with a vault, these are the strategies that we're talking about. You can just kind of go here, scroll through it. You can see the various um, APRs that you can earn through each of these vaults. and it seems like we expect to see a YETH vault here on this page sometime, maybe this week, which would be quite exciting. So there's ways to get started with wire. And of course, this is incredibly risky. Um, I test in prod. Remember that all of DeFi is tested in prod. So be careful about what you deposit. You could lose it if there's a smart contract hack, if there's some unforeseen event. Um, but for those of you guys you know, willing to live on the edge, uh, a little bit and risk it. it this is a, a very compelling way to do automated yield farming all of the money robot sorts of things you could do and uh mariano we we so much appreciate you coming on thank you specifically for sharing about your um your trifecta asset thesis 
I think that's going to be a, yeah, I think that's, that's one to you to watch certainly. And, um, might, we'll, might become a genius, post on really. Bankless in the future. Yes, <laughs> I think it should. <laughs> so thanks for joining us. Uh, no, uh, to you both. Uh, thank you so much for an invitation. Um, especially to David, uh, congratulations on, uh, going bankless full time. I, thank you. I, I think we mentioned that uh, we didn't have time to to touch up on this, but yeah, there's uh, a lot of people going DeFi full time. A lot and, of churn. A lot of yes, churn. Mm -hmm. and and it also coincided with you know the meteoric uh, rise of of Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. So I I think it's gonna empower a generation of builders. I hope so too. I hope so too. And Mariano, the same. Like, congratulations to you. You you saw MakerDAO from the very beginning to to its maturity. So like you know, tip of the hat for being such a pioneer in the space. You were bankless before before any of us here. So congrats on that. Thank you, thank you. And uh, yeah, I I want to say that even though I'm not in the foundation anymore, I'm mm -hmm. still very much involved with the protocol. You're part of the and DAO. I think that I can, yeah, I I, I can help MakerDAO a lot more now from outside than from within. So very cool. I'm going to become its biggest shiller. And <laughs> <laughs> very good. Well, uh, Mariana, thank, thank you, so you much. for having me. Cheers. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. All right. Bye, Mariana. Bye. bye. David, um, that was just fantastic. Too I good. You know, hope that was a, a deep dive on wiring for some folks who are trying mm -hmm. to get caught up on everything that's going on. Before we get to a few other topics I'm super excited to talk about, we should talk about our sponsors uh, again, David. Do you want to start with Ampleforth, my yeah, friend? Yeah, Ample, Ampleforth. I keep calling them the, the king of modern rebasing. Uh, so <laughs> a bunch of protocols have integrated this rebasing mechanism lately, and Ampleforth was the whole entire concept of, of invented the whole entire concept of rebasing. So Ampleforth, it's a pretty simple protocol with a lot of significant implications. It's very much like Bitcoin in the sense that it is a non-dilutive asset. So there is a fixed fixed uh it's not even a fixed supply there is a fixed uh, value of of ampleforth but the 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 price of the token unlike bitcoin stays the same over time but the supply of ampleforth fluctuates wildly just like bitcoin price fluctuates wildly so while the price of ampleforth is pegged to 2019 dollars that doesn't mean it's a stable coin because if you buy an ampleforth token you will see the value of how many ampleforth tokens you have in your wallet fluctuate up and down right and so if a, a, and what a rebase mechanism is is every 24 hours ampleforth will mint or burn tokens from your wallet in order to make sure that the token tracks 2019 dollars so it's like bitcoin but like inversed right so it's pretty crazy uh, they have this liquidity mining incentive program where if you add ether and ampleforth tokens to the uniswap pool you'll get an extra little bonus of of amples uh so very much in line with this uh, the yield farming narrative that that we are have seen uh and so you can check them out at ampleforth.org there's a lot to unpack with with ampleforth it's it's there's a lot more to what meets the eye so you can check them out at ampleforth.org all right also want to tell you a little bit about our sponsor monolith so monolith is an incredibly exciting i think uh, a set of tools this is primarily for our european listeners because it is mainly available in Europe. They are, they are looking to expand it, and I do hope they come to the U.S. very soon. Monolith is a crypto visa card, but it is a bankless crypto visa card, so they never take custody of your funds. This is one of the revolutions that can only happen on Ethereum. It essentially wraps your entire Ethereum address inside of a visa card, so you can deposit things into it like DAI, for instance, or even they recently added um, the Aave version of USD, so ADI or AUSD, so it acts as a savings account, basically. Anyway, that's all in a smart contract, um, but the output is you get this monolith Visa card where you could spend all of that crypto in the real world. You could go to Amazon, you could type in your Visa card number, and you could buy something. Um, that is really the most bankless way to use crypto that I know of today. It's sort of the vision and the dream that we've been talking about in crypto since you know, 2011, 2012. Using this stuff in the real world, it's starting to happen 
it is a one-to-one -one replacement for an HSBC or a, a Revolut if you're in Europe. And what you need to do is get started with it at monolith.xyz and get your bankless Visa card highly recommended uh, on your journey to going bankless. All right, David, we talked to Iron. Um, big topic. We've got a few other things. Big. That was a big topic, and this yeah. episode's going a little bit long. Yeah. Uh, do you want to maybe just finish off that? Because I know you've wanted to talk about this, and mm -hmm. my bad, dude. We should have announced this at the very beginning. So David it, it, is joining Bankless full time media. I've been I've been doing this close to full time for mm -hmm. for a while, but David is joining me and going full time. Mm -hmm. David, it's going to be awesome, man. We, I'm super psyched about that. That should have been in the announcements, but hopefully folks that are with us are not catching that. Yeah, so no, it's, it, this is part of with the state of the nation, right? So like, I am not the only person to leave their previous career to go off onto a new venture, right? And so uh, th through the bear market, like I've been working with Realty to, to get tokenized real estate up and running. Uh, Realty is about to uh, release their balancer system, which produces the Realty asset, which puts Realty in the game, right? Like Realty then has the token. And so like, I feel good about where I uh, brought Realty. And to be honest, like my skills as COO of Realty were great for that time period. But Realty, just like every other DeFi protocol is like getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so they need somebody who has uh, stronger and stronger skills. And, you know, as we all know, I'm much more suited to be like a content producer and evangelizer, uh, you know, a flag bearer of sorts. And so I'm really excited to, to be able to just like max out my like content production skills. Uh, and so David promised that he would deliver even more content than he's doing today. So I have no <laughs> idea how a human being is actually capable of doing that, but we're going to see. There's going to be a lot of content coming, churning out of the bankless nation. So I I'm really excited about that. But, but yeah, like, like I said, like I'm just one of like six, seven, eight people that have announced that they're, they're leaving their job that got them through the last two years in order to do something that uh, more aligns with what they want to do. Mariano just said like, you know, he, he was working with uh, the Maker Foundation for like the past four years. Um, you know, it, you can just go on Twitter and like every, every time there's a new yield farm, like somebody quits their job. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's just like, um, all right. So this is how, this is how sectors are mm -hmm. built. This is how Silicon Valley was mm -hmm. built, right? You know, um, why is Facebook why are Instagram, why are these Web2 companies based mm -hmm. in Silicon Valley? Well, it started with like Intel mm -hmm. back in the 1960s mm -hmm. and 70s, right? So Intel built a Silicon, Silicon mm -hmm. Valley, Silicon mm -hmm. ships, right? Turned that area into a computer manufacturing zone, which birthed the next generation, which yep. was Microsoft yep. and Apple in yep. the 1980s, which what? Birthed the next generation. Mm -hmm which was like Hotmail, which got like bought by, and then turned into YouTube and Facebook. So pa the PayPal so mafia. This is what happens, right? It's like, uh, it's like in physics, mm -hmm. you know, supernova of a star, mm -hmm. right? It's not just a one-time explosion. All of that material out of mm -hmm. a supernova then goes and creates a second generation mm -hmm. of stars. And right. then a third generation is born. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what's happening, though I would argue at an accelerated pace Extremely. in crypto and DeFi, right? Is first wave maker is successful, right? Maker's mm -hmm. successful. Now it's in a place where Mariano's like, look, I can contribute to the DAO, but I can leave it in good hands. Now I'm going to mm -hmm. my next wave. Is he leaving crypto? Hell no, no <laughs> he's not. How, no, no one is leaving crypto. <laughs> no one's leaving crypto. He's taking his money and he is reinvesting mm -hmm. in the space. He's mm -hmm. taking his talent and his skills mm -hmm. and he is reinvesting those in the space. Mm -hmm. That's how this place becomes like the capital Silicon Valley, the programmable money Silicon Valley. And it's all in the Ethereum economy, which is super exciting to me. Yeah, so um, yeah, Mariano, he, he's pretty public about his most recent seed investment in Zapper, our, our bankless sponsor. Uh, and and so, and he's not the Wait, only- Wait, so one. he paid for this episode? Yeah, so he- Indirectly? He, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's why we got him Thanks, on. Thanks, Mariano. Yeah. Well, the, your check's in the mail, Mariano. <laughs> uh, and so, um, and like, he's not the only one, like, like, like I said, like six, seven, eight people have quit their jobs. Like I've seen like a bunch of, a bunch of the people I know contribute seed investments. And the thing is like seed investments are for products that are going to come out. Like Zapper is already a live product, so you can go check them out. But like for the, for the other uh, seed investments that I've seen that, that, you know, may, may not be like so well known in this space, like these products are going to become live in like six months to three years, like very, very long window. Right. But 
Like yep. this bull market, uh, the last bull market lasted two years, but there's this also this idea of, you know, the lengthening cycles theory. Like every time Bitcoin has gone through a bull market and a bear market, each one has lasted longer. And I, that's just kind of just makes sense as things just get older, they just like take it, they, they move slower. And so I think this bull market is going to be long and drawn out because like as the energy of, of yield farming and liquidity mining and fair launches like that, that, I don't know how long that can sustain us. It probably can't sustain us for three years. It'll probably sustain us for a year or something. And then maybe there's like this NFT revolution. That's really hot. We're definitely, definitely hot on that. Um, but the thing is like people are shifting and positioning. That's why the state of the nation right now is positioning themselves in order to like build something that will like also uh, sustain ourselves into the future. And so I think that this is the golden age of Ethereum, the golden age of DeFi, because as one thing dies off and, and its energy kind of dissipates, like you said, it will reform itself into new energy and sustain ourselves. I think that this is going to be a bull market for the ages. Well, if you if you if you think about a little bit like the internet after the collapse, right? So like dot com collapse two thousand two thousand one. A- Amazon, by the way, lost ninety six percent of its value, its peak market cap value. It's interesting. Ethereum lost ninety five percent of its peak market cap value. But then, if you started getting into the internet when everyone thought everything was dead in two thousand one two thousand two, um, it wasn't just a another cycle, right? It's, that's been a good investment for the past 20 years to have internet skills, mm-hmm. right? And look at Amazon. I mean, it hit mm-hmm. its uh, market cap in, in 2008 and then blew right past it. Mm-hmm. Now it's, is it the most valuable company in the world competing with, with maybe Apple yeah. uh, mm-hmm. to be that? Like the last 20 years were owned by the internet. It wasn't mm-hmm. just a boom bust cycle, boom mm-hmm. bust cycle. That's why I think it is important to be in the nation now in mm-hmm. these early phases, because not only the capital, Right, mm-hmm. uh, but also the skills that you're developing now mm-hmm. are going to pay dividends, and and also the network, the community, mm-hmm. right? Like, Absolutely. you know, who you know at this mm-hmm. point in time, they're going to move on to do great things because they're simply front running everyone. They're simply early, so it's a great time to be early. It's a great time to go bankless. Um, yeah, I couldn't be more excited, and I do think that you know, there, it could be a multi-year bull run. Absolutely. David, um, oh, go one, ahead. One last note on that. One, one of my favorite lines from Eric Voorhees is that like Bitcoin doesn't go through bull market, well, bull markets and then bear bear markets. It's just it, it's been in this like decade long bull market, right? Yeah, and right. we knew about this in Ethereum too, where like the 2017 bull market and then the 2018 19 bear market. I don't know about you, but like in 2018 and 2019, so much more was built in those two years so much more. than like all previous years combined. So like price, so prices aside, the bull market is in the development, right? And now the bull market is also in the development. Like just talking, we just spent like an hour talking about just one protocol and all of one. its one protocol. And, and one week. In, in one week. <laughs> and so like that, that developmental bull market continues and now also the prices are following, right? And so yep. again, bull market for the ages. Yeah, yeah, super excited. David and I are bullish. We're, if you uh, couldn't just, tell, just a smidge, just a little smidge. bit. But here's why. Look, let's talk about our next thing real quick, mm-hmm. uh, and then I want to get to ETH. This is Uniswap protocol. Okay, so we've been we've been talking about Uniswap for a while. Been waiting for this moment for a while. It, it finally happened over the past twenty four uh, one one twenty four hour period of time. Uniswap, the decentralized exchange, the little money robot. That was, you know, founded with less than a hundred thousand dollars, and Hayden Adams, his another Adams represent, is uh, his first, his first not crypto project, his first coding project, mm-hmm. like ever. He learned to and code. He learned to code, and this happened what November two thousand eighteen. You talk about things mm-hmm. getting built built at that in that time period. Mm-hmm. Well, its volume now surpassed Coinbase. Uniswap's volume surpassed. Coinbase in its first twenty six million. It's first bull market. It's first try. It's first try. Right? <laughs> like okay, so I, I I put out a tweet like uh, a while ago that basically said um, I think Uniswap will be the largest market in the world. Like we're talking like tens of trillions of dollars mm-hmm. potentially in volumes in the next ten years. Right. Mm-hmm. This is how it happens it's, exponentially. Yeah. Right. Like it just. I bet people thought and, you were crazy when you said that. They did. They, you know, another shill fest hype tweet from Ryan, you know, right. like mm-hmm. that's what we've come to expect. Trump right. Of but Ethereum. Like, 
<laughs> I'm just saying like, it's happening guys. Mm -hmm. It is freaking happening. Like mm -hmm. protocol sync thesis, it's happening. Mm -hmm. Like Uniswap being used by other, you know, um, DeFi banks, uh, crypto banks, it's happening. All of mm -hmm. this stuff is, is kind of playing out. Um, so that's crazy. That's exciting. Um, I don't know, David. <laughs> You want to say anything about that? Anything more about that? Or is that just... Yeah, that's, that's kind of it. It's just like Bitcoin maximalists are like hyper Bitcoinization is happening around us. And like we are like the protocol sync thesis is happening around us. I like ours and better. By the way, and by the way, Bitcoin is part of the protocol sync thesis. Absolutely. It kind of fits. It but fits right the, in. the problem with maximalism, maximalism is it's just like there's only one thing. There's only one yeah, asset. They, they think that everything else. there's only one room for... There's only room for one protocol in the protocol sync thesis. But yep. there's a lot more. Yep. Yep. All right. All right. So uh, real quick then. So sushi is like cloning Uniswap. Yeah. What do you think about sushi? Have you been doing sushi? I, no, I haven't mining? been able to follow this one. <laughs> <laughs> but so it's like yams. Right? It's so like the, yams. The, the, the mining mechanism is like yams. Uh -huh. right? We talked about that, right? So, mm -hmm. And it even looks like yams, mm -hmm. except you, you have a sushi chef at the top rather than a, um, a, you know, a simple farmer. Composable right? communities. Um, Composable, composable communities. Community. So they're composing together all of these communities and they're trying to vampire suck liquidity out mm -hmm. of Uniswap. It does seem to be a legit project. Um, mm -hmm. Whether they're just juicing it for the returns and then everything's going to collapse, like it's over a billion in market cap. Which is right already now. insane. It's not yep. even a week and old. We, and we haven't seen Uniswap V3 mm -hmm. fight back yet, right. which is going to be pretty exciting. I have a feeling that that's going to be something to watch. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. What do you think? Do you think this is, is this good for DeFi or is this basically just hype, hype machine? Um, like we're people farming this stuff are getting carried away right. with this fleeting memes and, um, you know, Uniswap is, is the one to watch. Yeah. So I think as time goes on, it's going to become much, much more of the latter and much less of the former, right? As time goes on, we should start to be more skeptical. We, as time goes on, we should be more wary uh, because, you know, there's there, just like in the ICO world. And, and I wrote a Market Monday piece in Bankless about this, where like the initially the ICO was good, right? Ethereum killed it with its ICO. Augur killed it with its ICO. The ICO for those things were really beneficial in doing what they were supposed to do, which is spreading out the tokens to a large amount of people. And that's exactly what these things are doing. And so like... Uh, wifey and, and yearn good like nailed it nailed it out of the park yams so good nailed it nailed it out of the park sushi i think is also good like sushi i think is is a very viable product and is and the the whole con uh, thesis about the market monday post that i that i uh, put out yesterday was every single protocol on, on ethereum there's incentives baked in to try and fork and fair launch it and so like, I think over the next like six months, we're going to see a bunch of fork and fair launches because the incentives are there. And I think that's also going to be good because like that, they, that every single protocol deserves to have its fair shot, right? Like, and so like, if we can fork and fair launch something, let, let's try it out. Like that's by no means means that Sushi is going to be the next Uniswap. Uh, it doesn't not mean that like things are, are yet to be determined. And the thing is, it's up to the community because all things rest on community. All things in Ethereum and DeFi rest on community. And so it's up to community to determine whether this thing is worth it or not. And a large part of the community's perception is to how fair the, the launch is, right? And yeah. how good the product is. And so ultimately, the free market will decide because, and the free market will decide based on how dense if the thing is in the protocol sync. Because the fairer and more equitable the launch is, the stronger the community it will generate and the deeper down in the protocol sync it will be. And so I, right now, I'm all for it. Like I've seen some, some shady clones of, you know, you know, some of the wifey clones weren't, weren't so hot. But like right now, you know, we're, we're on a pretty solid stra uh, track record of like good things. Wifey, yams, sushi swap. Um, I think those are the big ones. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm pro experimentation. The market will figure it out in time. Look, no, no one is forcing you to buy sushi, right? If you want to risk your capital and keep in mind, guys, this is a risk. When you put stuff into a farm, you, do, you don't know about, hasn't been audited from a, like a team that who, who knows, anything can happen. You could lose it all. But if you're willing to risk that capital, I mean, the way to do it is to farm it, right? You don't have to buy sushis. You can just kind of farm it and and see what happens. See if you like the community. See if the product is any better. Um, I'm definitely pro experimentation too. 
But I'm also pro Uniswap fighting back, to be honest. <laughs> I hope they do. Dude, chalk it up and as an experimentation. I, look, Dodo came out, which was, uh, remember Hasib talked about that? That came out this week. They're yeah, doing liquidity mining, <laughs> right? So that's a different curve. It's an, another automated market maker that you guys can take a look at. But um, like when these liquidity robots fight, we as users, DeFi users, we as the Ethereum economy, we benefit because mm -hmm. they just get better and better. They mm -hmm. level each other up. It's Absolutely. beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very excited. Let the wars begin. Yeah. Fight, guys. And, and Robo fight. Nick Nick Carter uh, talks about like this fight as like if in the crypto banks world, like the Bitcoin banks, because like the, he thought that the, the era of free banking when gold was the standard was like the best for consumers. And, you know, I love Nick Carter, but like, yeah, for some reason he likes Bitcoin, but like this same free banking competition is happening, but it's in DeFi with the protocols. The protocols yeah, are totally the free is. banks. It's free banks. And they are yep. fri they are totally fighting and, and fighting tooth and nail for for community acceptance. They are like, please, community, accept us. And the way that they do that is by doing things right. Right? There's yep. no other way to do it. It's the freest market in the world right now. It's the freest market in the world. Like mm -hmm. Ethereum is just it's the freest market for experimentation in the world, and it's beautiful. Anyway, all right. Last thing. Let's last topic. Um, let me share my screen. This is a t this is something on um, uh, the price price again of ether. So all this stuff is happening in the Ethereum economy. But something I've noticed, um, something we've been tracking for a while, is this. So if you take a different lens for ETH, we've talked about this many times. I tweeted this out last mm -hmm. week uh, sometime. The price to earnings ratio. So what's the price to earnings ratio in stocks? It's how we assess capital assets like stocks. So if you're buying Netflix, $1, one share of Netflix, right? Um, for um, uh, its market price right now, you are essentially paying $88 for every $1 in profit mm -hmm. that the Netflix share generates. Does that make sense? That's what the right. PE ratio is. So it's so the you, price to earnings. So you purchase it and then in 88 years, you'll get the value that you put in back. And then you'll exactly. also, and then you'll also have the Netflix stock. Exactly. And this is all hypothetically because most of the time these, what these uh, companies do is they don't pay out dividends. Um, they retain their earnings and they reinvest it back in the business and shareholders like that. They prefer that they vote for that because ideally the executive team can uh, generate a higher return than you can. It's better for taxes, all these things. So you, when you're buying one share of Netflix, you're paying $88 for profit. When you're buying one share of Amazon, you're paying $130 for $1 of profit. You make your money back in 130 years. Okay. If you buy zoom today, you're paying a hundred, uh, $1,777 for $1 in the previous 12 months profit. So what tends to happen is you can kind of see it here is the market is expecting Zoom to grow faster than Amazon to grow faster than Netflix in terms of its profit. That's why the PE ratio is higher for these companies. Do the same thing for ETH, like do it, right? And they've done that on um, token terminal, which you can do. The PE ratio for ETH, Ether the asset is 38 right now, okay? <laughs> All right, so this wait, is the wait. Next... I thought crypto was ridiculous. This I thought stupid, I thought crypto man. was the weird one. These stocks are like trading at very high flying, like money printer go burr um, PE ratios. Now they are, they just are. But the PE ratio for ETH is is thirty eight dollars. So that's two percent of Zoom, right? So this is the next global money system that is growing at the rates we've been talking about for the past year, and it's. It's valued at 2% the price earnings of a video conferencing app. Good on Zoom. We're using them right now. I like Zoom. <laughs> but it's not Ethereum. I could easily substitute to something else, man. Right. We could go to WebEx or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, I think ETH is stupidly underpriced, not financial advice, but it is. It's hilarious. <laughs> it is. It is. It's no, it's not financial true. advice, but it is hilarious. It is hilarious. It is hilarious. Yes. Okay. And then, so this is it at Token Terminal, and we can see this. So Token Terminal has done a great job of doing, they call it uh, not price to earnings, price to sales. That's a bit more accurate. It's more mm -hmm. like revenue, right? Same, um, same, same metric though, right? Very similar, right? It's just earnings is like after all of your expenses. Mm -hmm. And some of these protocols have expenses, et cetera. So if you were to look at ETH as a, a capital asset, um, one of the expenses might be running a validator mm -hmm. potentially, right? Mm -hmm. So you'd have to take that out. But look at ETH, 39 here. It wow. was 37 the other day, 39, right? If you sort by PE for all of the other DeFi protocols, or uh, sort by price to 
only Bancor has a better PE. Yeah. Everything else is higher. Why is that? So what is, when, when we talk about price to sales, the price is what you pay for ETH, right? The sales mm -hmm. is the transaction revenue. Mm -hmm. So that's all of the fees. Mm -hmm. And by the way, this is just transaction fees, not issuance. All of the issuance fees earned mm -hmm. by uh, miners. Okay. So here it is. If you chart it out, this is revenue. This is what Boom. ETH is earning in transaction fees. Market cap is not following suit. Right. Why? Right. Hmm, why? Maybe, maybe because it, it's hilarious. Is that is that an option to front run the opportunity, Ryan? Is that what that is? I don't know. I maybe mean, you tell me. Right. <laughs> it's like I'm just I'm just throwing the data out here. Okay. So you have the price earnings, and then people are like, okay, um, but it's it's not it's not uh, apples to apples, right? Mm -hmm. uh, comparison with stocks. I agree. Right. It's not apples to apples. And then people say you can't compare. Well, you can compare um, because even if it's apples to oranges, both are fruits and right. you can compare fruits, right? So I'd also like when, to compare the the stocks, which has money printer go burr behind it and Ether and Bitcoin, which don't. So that's also something to take okay. a note. Exactly. So uh, back to you, ETH is a triple point asset, right? So what is price to earnings actually taking a look at? only one pillar of the triple point asset th uh, thesis, only one pillar. So remember triple point asset thesis, is there are three pillars that make ether valuable, three things. One, it's used as a money store of value. Two, it's used as a commodity denominated money. So you pay, use it to pay for gas. And then three, it becomes a productive capital asset in staking. This is just the third one. This is just productive capital asset in staking. And it's got a PE of like 37 to 39 right now. So. What happens in staking is when ETH2 comes around, that ETH that you hypothetically own becomes a capital asset that you can use to stake. And you get two things. One, if you're a validator, you get a share of transaction fees, and then you also get issuance. By the way, issuance is not included in this PE ratio. It's not included, just transaction fees. And then if you just hold ETH in ETH2.0, all of those transaction fees, you don't even have to validate. Mm -hmm. All of those transaction fees, or at least a portion of them that go to EIP-1559 burn, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. You get those essentially yep. in burnt supply, not yep. as a dividend, but actually as burnt supply. Roundabout so, dividend. A roundabout dividend. So a more tax efficient dividend. Mm, so sure. the, um, the, the PE right now is a bit more hypothetical, okay? Mm -hmm. But when ETH2 comes around, it becomes, it becomes real. And it's only one pillar, one, one leg of the, the triple point asset stool. It's mm -hmm. just valuing ETH as a capital asset. And it is, by the way, absolutely insane to value ETH just as a capital asset. Right. Absolutely crazy to do that. Right. You need to value it as a monetary asset, as economic bandwidth, because 6% is locked up in DeFi, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe that growing. increases to 10% growing. and growing. Just grew two more percent in the past, you know, three weeks. Why ETH falls? Um, technically deployed haven't seen haven't seen the ui yet we'll see what happens yeah. when the ui is there and then as a commodity as well so mm -hmm. all of these transactions you need you better hold some eth right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, to pay for all of the transactions so i don't know do that's you, all do that's you, i want to say it's do you know that crazy. that website that compares uh protocol fees bitcoin ether uniswap do you know that one off the top of your head ah uh, yeah what is that yeah that, I, know, I know what you're talking we, about we've shown that one before um anyways uh, well you could look at you could look at um so on that website, um, both Uniswap and Balancer now are ahead of are ahead of Bitcoin in terms of fees, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so Bitcoin is like number four. So it's like Ether is generating more fees, Uniswap and Balancer are generating more fees, and then Bitcoin is number four for the first time. Bitcoin is number four, and huh? If you looked at Bitcoin's PE, it is 561. And again, this is purely hypothetical for Bitcoin because mm -hmm. It actually uh, is not a staking asset, does not turn into a capital asset. It's just mm -hmm. hypothetical. Mm -hmm. But if you compared it, that's what you'd see right mm -hmm. now with Ether. If, if somebody's watching in the YouTube who knows that website that we're talking about, please drop it in there. I would like to get that up. But the, the point is, is that like there are protocols on Ethereum that, I mean, we've, we've said this before. Protocols on Ethereum are making more fees than, than Bitcoin itself, right? And, and that's, that's bullish in of itself. Pr Ethereum is a protocol of protocols. And no one really knows how to evaluate it yet, but like we do know it's undervalued. That's for sure. Uh, it seems probably. that way. It's, it quite seems that way. But that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. But so, um, 
yeah, why why hasn't it fallen? Uh, why hasn't it followed suit? DeFi going crazy. Why hasn't it followed suit? What, do you have an explanation for that? Yeah, it's it's a one of a kind of asset that no one understands. Except, I mean, I think I think I understand it to a decent degree, but like I don't think I currently understand it to the degree that I will understand it in two, five, ten years. Just no one understands. No, one, it, it's an information asymmetry, right? And and somebody somebody's informational asymmetry is is your opportunity. There you go. That's I was why. looking for that. I was looking for it, um, but I couldn't find it. That's looking fine. at Anthony's That's Twitter feed, but it's pretty packed. <laughs> uh, but David, I think. <laughs> I think that's all we have time for, that, my friend. That is all we have Should time we close for. It down here? I, I, I start, we started this state of the nation and the sun was down and now the sun is up. The sun never wow. sets on it's the bankless far. nation. That is for sure. <laughs> it truly does it. It's, it I mean, we're global, right? Global, global revolution. Global revolution. Can use it anywhere. All right, guys. This has been State of the Nation episode number 12. So you can catch this on YouTube like right now as you're watching. It comes out Tuesdays. And then if you prefer podcast audio, it comes out uh, tomorrow. As always, guys, this is not financial advice. Uh, we have our own opinions. Uh, we have our own thoughts, but we are not providing financial advice on this episode. We're also not providing tax advice. Keep in mind everything we talked about, Wiren, ETH, you know, other DeFi assets, Wifey, they're all super risky. You could lose what you put in, but this is the journey. We are going west, guys, and we are glad that you are with us on the bankless journey. Thanks a lot. So, hey, Ryan, um, when I hit the stop streaming button, it truncated the video last time. So I'm just going to uh, kill time by talking about it. Um, and so okay. uh, I also want to bring up. Are we live still? We're still, we're still live. Um, okay. but we're about to not be. Uh, Nugget News in the YouTube comments, which I'm pretty sure is Alex. What up, Alex? Yeah. Uh, said oh, that, hey, Alex. Shut yeah, up. <laughs> he, he said uh, that, that I didn't calculate this. I didn't run the numbers myself.